Hi there, welcome to uh, the 21st day of August 2022. My name is Kurt and this is my daily good life meditation video. I do this every morning to uh, rem remember my life objectives and principles and to see how I'm doing applying them, uh, namely to the challenges and opportunities, both yesterday and to plan for the coming day. So uh, last night, slept pretty good, slept until the alarm. I really wanted to sleep in, but I don't, so I didn't. <laughs> I just laid there for a little bit. I'm really tired this morning. I need I need some coffee. Yes, sir. Very busy day. Nico and I did a lot of cleaning and shopping yesterday. Ah, very busy. Um, plus, I walked a lot. Took the dogs for some enormous, enormously long walks. The uh, w weather was cooler, so in the evening um, I was able to walk without the blistering heat, and so the dogs and I had a nice time. Hmm. And I read a little bit, not as much as I'd like. Not really challenged by anything. No real opportunities. It was just a uh, a day of. Um, It's a day, a day. Ah. Need a sip. I'm having more of these days lately where um, in the morning I'm just tired and I can't quite bring myself to do this video in the deliberate manner that I like. I wind up doing the lightning round and messing up. But that is my prerogative. Making this video is, um, though I require myself to recite the good life, um, the creed, um, I can do it in any way I like. As long as I do it, I can just, I don't even have to say it out loud, I can just say it in my head. All of this is bonus. I would like to uh, exercise more um, deliberate energy to try to do a better job, though. Maybe I'll try to do that this morning. I want to just do the lightning round. I really just want to push through. But then I know that that awful, awful um, example of poor momentum will likely then be the norm for the rest of the morning. Wouldn't it be better if I can set a exa better example for myself? Oh. Tell you guys about something. So you, uh, you know, Yumiko and I plan to go back to Japan as soon as, as soon as uh, Emily's done with school. I'll stay behind. Uh, Yumiko, namely, Yumiko will go over first. She'll retire, and then go over first. Um, initially, it might be just a, whenever I say retirement. Initially, it's probably a semi-retirement until uh, Social Security kicks in at 62. Um, then we can fully retire. So if either of us goes over before 62, it's a, semi, it's a partial retirement. Because I'll have my pension. Um, well, well, as long as she goes over by herself, then I'll support her with my salary. And then once I go over, we'll both live off of my pension. And then when we hit age 62, we'll uh, start Social Security for both of us. And then we'll um, yeah, uh, enjoy that. That'll, that'll help us really to enjoy retirement in earnest. Um, so what was I going to say? So anyway, um, we're looking at places to live. And for decades, literally, I fantasized about um, a community. And for more than 10 years, I fantasized about a particular farm um, nearby where Yumiko lives. And um, it's a farm that's owned by the family, I mean, by the family friends. Friends of uh, ours, or my, particularly my, fa my father-in-law's friends. I learned last night that that farm is available. It's not available. It's 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 empty. No one lives there anymore. The, the whole family has died out. The only person left is a uh, is the is, the, is a wayward son that no no one knows where he is. Um, and the uh, house is just the farm. It's the entire farm with bamboo forest. And regular farmland is just is just languishing. 
Now, here's where I have to use a little bit of my good life. I mean, my, yeah, the good life uh, creed. I barely speak any Japanese. I certainly don't read or write it. And uh, I can't pursue this myself. And I don't think anybody in my family, my wife's family, will do this. And I'm not going to push anybody to do this. Um, I'm really not even going to bring it up. I did already. I, I, I brought it up to the extent that I would bring it up yesterday when I was talking to Yumiko. And I know her and I know her family well enough. They, there's not, they don't even know where to start. And we're here, far away. What's probably going to wind up happening is that the farm will, uh, um, the wayward son isn't going to pay taxes on the place. And then the farm will wind up in the uh, in the local Akia bank. That's what I can do. That's within that's within the reasonable limits, right? What I can do is is ask my wife to help me, or my daughter, probably my wife, help me find the local Akia bank for our area, which is the uh, government listings for um, properties made available for um, tax reasons. You know. Uh, the government is selling and then just keep an eye on that Akia bank listings look for that property to come up and then get it that way that's the recognition that's that's the that's the prudent thing to do you know i'm not going to press my family to find this because that would mean like what are they going to do what are they going to you know press around and talk to the neighbors are they going to call the government office i don't want anybody i do i would do those things if, if we lived there i would do those things to the best of my ability i would go up I would go up to that area and uh, and talk to the neighbors myself. But I, I know that's for others, that's not comfortable. So I'm not going to press anybody to do any of that. But if I can just get a hold of the Akia Bank, then I can find that. And uh, that's the best I can do. And otherwise, we'll keep on looking. And we'll find something. But the other thing is that it made me realize there must be just so many properties just like that, just languishing in... A twilight zone of inactivity, you know, where the, the, fi the final resident is gone. There's just either no interest in the part of the, on the part of the family, or no, or uh, no capability to do anything about it. I mean, realtors aren't even going to want to take these old places on, right? I mean, they, they're so cheap; they're hardly worth the uh, the hardly worth the effort. There, I think I did a good job. I just did it right now. You saw me do it. This is an example of me, of how I use the good life, you know, to face down my circumstances, look at them, object, look at what's happening objectively, you just use the um, critical tools of reason, honesty, objectivity, and doubt to, to spot where, where opportunities and limits are, and then, and to, and then to plan, a, plan a prudent route forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do the good life. Seven objectives, as follows. The first objective is to always be ready to die, to have my life affairs, my relationships, and my life's work in order. Number two is to make a good and effective use of time, to uh, not waste my time. But to be... be Smart with its allocate, smart with its use. I don't need to add anything to that. Just say, don't waste my time. I've got so little. Three is to develop and maintain good and sound life principles. These very things that I'm talking about right now. Next is to cultivate good emotional reactions so that I don't fly off the handle or react inappropriately in any way. Next is to perform good actions, just to do good things throughout the day. Then to recognize my true limits and my true opportunity and to apply apathy, the ability to recognize what is outside of my control and not be and to disconnect from it, like I am with this house. Disconnecting from and being apathetic about my desire to buy that house right now because it is outside of my control. It is outside of my limits to be able to, to affect that process beyond Keeping track of where, uh, looking, keeping track of the local Akia Bank for that area. 
And then finally, um, to do just one thing at a time and to do that thing slowly, deliberately, and carefully. Good. I'm pleased with this. I'm pleased, and I'm also pleased with how I turned this around. I was just going to do a tired lightning round, but I'm trying to do a better job. I even remembered to throw in apathy. Let's see if I can remember to throw in prudence next. Where would prudence belong? Temperance, maybe? Let's try it there. Now, my 31 principles are, one, the principle of war. To always be fighting against what I think is true and against what anyone else suggests that I should believe is true. Two, the principle of reason and the sub-principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt, which are the attitude and frame of mind that I have when approaching the world, particularly when I'm performing the aforementioned war. Next is the homunculus, the little mortal that lives inside my head, my substitute for a soul. Then comes the uh, anchor hold, the place where the homunculus resides, where it suffers, and then one day dies. A little rock, so to speak, sticking out of the sea, where the tide rises and falls, the waves churn, the wind blows, the storms come, the sun burns. And all the while I struggle not to slip and fall into the sea, where I will one day wind up nonetheless. Next comes the home of good and evil, a reminder that right and wrong are mere opinions. They do not exist anywhere outside of our minds. There is no absolute right or wrong. Next is uh, the principle of purpose. And the three sub-principles are biology, virtue, and mission. Biology speaks to my decisions and my efforts to be a good husband and father, to fulfill my biological mandate to reproduce. Virtue is my effort to be a virtuous man, to be a good man, and then uh, apath and virtue, and then finally, um, mission is the fulfillment of my personal mission, which for me is the sharing of my life's story, going alone, and the good life creed that resulted of this. But more and more I'm discovering that uh, this was just another distraction as well. Really the uh, um, only peace that's going to be found is in getting old. That has the sound of another principle, doesn't it? This, cut, this, this idea came as a result of my conversation yesterday on, in, on Discord with Michael. He and I were talking about, he's a young father, 30-something, maybe in his 40s, I really don't know. Anyway, he's got young kids. And we were talk, talking about the search for peace, and I mentioned that uh, I've only been able to find peace through getting old. It seems like youth is built for restlessness. Not just youth, but middle adulthood, um, childbearing, just manhood, I think, in particular. Maybe womanhood, too, but I think manhood. Manhood is uh, built. Manhood is restless. Could that be another principle? or maybe a sub-principle. The idea is this. From adolescence on, men in particular, and, and, and I'll back this up, because over the years as Softy Papa, I was Lyle's brother before, and then Softy Papa, and then now as myself, um, I've been contacted um, since I've been making my videos by just so many people who have contacted me, sharing a sense of restlessness and a desire for adventure in their life. By far, it's men who contact me. Um, few women, but mostly it's men. Women want adventure too, but it's a different type of a thing. And I have come to believe that that's part and parcel of what we are. It's part of our mission is to be wanting to scramble outside the village, to rummage around in the hills and the valleys and 
to uh, view to climb the mountains to get a view of of what's beyond seeking better resources right that's how we expand our species this is part of our survi survival mechanism so uh, where the women are staying behind and tending to the families and the, the villages and the, wherever we've where we've set up our little camp the camps I'm thinking the bat in the way 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 back in the past when we were hunter gatherers the men just took off every day and went about looking for resources. And that restlessness was what drove us to find new pastures, so to speak. I think manhood is restless, and it manifests itself um, in a way in this, uh, this, this, this churning desire for something new and interesting that I hear in so many of the emails that I get. Manhood is restless. Damn almighty. Where am I going to put this? It's a principle. Maybe it belongs under the great life adventure. Or maybe next to it. What if I did... Manhood is Restless, The Great Life Adventure. Manhood is Restless, The Path of Wildness, The Great Life Adventure. Hmm. I like that. Okay, I'm going to slip that in. So that brings me to 32 damn principles. The list continues to grow. I think that's what, let me just kind of square back to where I was. I think I was on purpose, yeah. Kind of belongs there too, part of it. Hmm. I think I'm going to try that just the way I described it. Okay, the next uh, principle then is atomic principle. Everything is a little bits and pieces, atoms and molecules falling to pieces. So to us. Then the principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature. I could see how man who does let restless could go there too. Just under the principle of nature or beside it. See, I can see it like this. Everything has some particular nature, including us. Men in particular are restless. Manhood is restless. It's a good group of work there, too. It's, it's a very, this is a principle that seems to touch a lot. I, I don't want to make it a sub principle. I think it's weighty enough to be its own principle. Hmm. Next comes the pirate ride. Free will is an illusion. Very convincing one. And then maturity and the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude. Then uh, pu public speaking. Uh, the social principle. We are social creatures. We need each other. And then public speaking. To re a reminder to be very careful about what I say, to use few words, carefully chosen words and deliberate words. Then comes uh, temperance, and these are principles of suffering and simplicity. And then after temperance comes, life will not go well. A reminder that to, to expect ruts in the road and to bridges to wash out and flat tires along the way. Life is tough. And then the horror show. To remember to expect absolute horror to come. Diagnosis of stage 4 cancer. Automobile accidents. Severed limbs. Serial killers. Armed robbers. All kinds of stuff. Just 
horror. To expect that. Leading to death. Maybe lingering painful death, no less. It is a truth. It is a fact that these things happen. They're going on around me, right here in this neighborhood. And it'll happen to me and you. And then the principle called that which must be born. And what we have to bear is the uh, consequence of the horror show. And then the feast of... And, 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 all, and we also have to bear the weight of the responsibilities that we onboard in life. Then comes... Um, the Feast of Ophel, which is the waste and byproduct of our intemperate living, the upset that we throw out into the world when we've had enough, the others throw out when they've had enough, and that we, we consume up like gossip. Then comes distraction. We spend our whole lives distracting ourselves from the great indifference, which is, which is the next principle, which is the, uh, the evidence of no God. The, the lack of evidence, maybe that's a better way to say it. We don't want to see that, so we tell ourselves family, we tell ourselves work, we tell ourselves friends, we tell ourselves hobbies, we tell ourselves church, so that we don't have to see the empty. So that we don't have to tell ourselves there is no God. Then comes uh, the best seat in the house, to be all right with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. Then comes the path of wildness. No, 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 the next one, the new one. Manhood is restless. Do I want to call it that? I feel like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to be politically correct. How could I reword that? So it includes women. Because there are women that feel this too. Could I call it just the principle of restlessness? Restless want. I'll work on it. I'll find a name. Anyway, if I call it for now, manhood is restless. How about the principle of the restless man? Man could be a man or a woman, right? I think that's it. The principle of the restless man. It's long. it's long. I could just call it restless man for short. Hashtag, hashtag restless. <laughs> let's try to let's try to describe it. The principle of the restless man suggests that uh, uh, nature has armed us with a desires, the desire for something new. The a wish for new horizons and new pastures to have experiences and to go places to be a little bit uh, find, find this the status quo a little dull not all of us are like that yeah. huh. this seems to happen more often for, to men than women um, but they want for something else some adventure usually that restlessness manifests itself as a desire for adventure and it's a part of our it's a part of our biological success because we need to be exploring and finding new resources and the way to do that is to is to uh, have an inner drive to push towards something new especially young men especially middle-aged men less so older men like me i've only found that this restlessness is kind of shut down of its own of its own volition as i um, reached my mid-50s because my, my, 
my, my restless years are done. Okay. I like that. I like, I like that sound. Okay, I'll leave that right there. I'll just put that right there. I'll work on adding that to the book this morning. Okay, next is, that's the principle of the restless man. Then comes uh, the path of wildness, which is what restlessness can drive us to, drive us to, to setting out onto a new path. It's uh, a way to segue into a new life course to adventure. And then um, that's, and then the path of wildness leads to a great life adventure, which is the satisfaction of that restlessness. Yeah, it comes full circle. I like that. Okay, I'll leave that there. I'll be developing that on a day-by-day -day basis. Okay, let's, let's continue. Next comes uh, the, the risk of avoiding risk. There's the deep level risk of life and the surface level stuff. The deep stuff is the uh, finding of oneself, the, you know, the satisfaction of the restlessness, doing something about that, and creating a life story as a result, a great life adventure. The surface level risks are addressing to that are, are education, family, career, education, career, family, home, and security, namely, preparing for retirement along the way. It's good to attend to both the surface and the deep. It's hard to do both, to, to do them both well. Next comes sin, next comes sin and damnation. And the seven sub-principles are falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma, um, authority, and doubt, and uh, gossip. They're flavors of, mostly flavors of belief either believing things that are untrue or being untrue. Then, and the consequence of indulging in any of those is damnation in the here and now. Next comes complete oblivion. After we're dead, that's the end of us. We're completely wiped out. At least our, our consciousness, our biology, our, our, our atoms and molecules will go on, our energy for certain. Okay. Oh, pardon me. The season of philosophy is a time to record what we've learned along the way. The bullseye aim is a reminder to try to hit to hit the bullseye mark with our goals, but recognizing that we'll usually miss, sometimes completely wide of the mark. Uphill climb is a reminder to keep trudging upwards, to not linger and wait, not, to not sit on, sit on my butt, on the side of the hill, but to climb today. Arena and utility is a reminder that life is like an arena, like a gladiator's arena, where we come out armed with our principles that we can use throughout the day to engage in the combat of uh, achieving our objectives. I like the way that sounds. After that comes... Uh, Nothing is enough. Suggestion deep beyond temperance. That there is no satisfaction in things. Or little satisfaction. It doesn't last for long. The best satisfaction is to, to know, is to overcome our desires. As the Buddhists say. And then lastly, the principle of fun. A reminder to have fun. To attempt to have fun to the best of my ability now. And in the future, the, rem the thinking about the, the good times to come. And then the remembrance of the past. Okay, I did it. I, I, I got through this and, I, and I, I kind of wrestled myself from fatigue and not wanting to do a good job into a position of doing a good job on the good life and even adding a new principle along the way. That's quite a, quite a turnaround. Now let's talk about the coming day. I'll finish this, hit the stop button, start the upload, go over, read my Bible. I think I'm on Ezekiel 12 today. Then I'll start the computer up. Well, that fires up, I'll take the dogs downstairs, I'll feed them, then I'll walk them, then I'll come back here, uh, and I will write, work on writing, adding this new principle to the good life, I mean, to going alone, and um, begin my day. I've got a few things I want to do. I want to do some reading. I want to research a house that I found in, the, uh, in Japan, make a blog post about it, and then when Yumiko gets up, well, she and I will go see a movie. I think we're going to go see Bullet Train today, the Brad Pitt movie. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Be safe, but not too safe.